Friends, the Lord be with you. Welcome all to this service of worship at First Presbyterian Church of Garner. May all members, friends, visitors, guests be filled with peace as we offer our thanks to the triune God who loves us and loves all the world. A happy Father's Day to all as well. On days like this, we especially remember how God created all there is, and is also the very epitome of the many traits we associate with faithful fatherhood. Patience and endurance, wisdom and strength, firmness, but also tenderness, vulnerability, uh, an attitude that is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. So may the one whom Jesus called Abba Help us as we give thanks to all the faithful father figures in our life and as we make peace in whatever ways we might need with any of the strains, grief, and hurts that we may still carry from those same relationships. We also rejoice this day as we hear from a faithful father in our own congregation Elder Kamivi Ekele, who serves with our buildings and grounds team and helps out with our worship ministry team as well, is our preacher for the day. And this is the second of a uh, still new annual tradition of an ordained elder preaching on at least one Sunday of a year here at First Presbyterian. I want to say thank you not only to Kamivi, though, but to the whole Ekele family for their worship leadership. Michelle and Marina for being liturgists, and Marina, I'm sorry for the misprint of your last name in the bulletin. We give thanks, of course, for Kamivi preaching, but also uh, for Regina first putting him up to it, uh, as I understand it, encouraging uh, him and affirming uh, his capacity to do so. And so we are delighted to hear a word from him today. I have a few other announcements to bring to your attention as I share those announcements. I invite you to take the pad that is on the center of the aisle to sign it and to pass it along uh, for others to sign as well. Uh, First, I want to uh, point out what you may have already figured out. Uh, Gloria is not here this morning. Uh, Bill got a message uh, uh, early that Gloria uh, was sick, Um, apparently a stomach bug going around after her grandson, J.B. Slaughter, did graduate from high school uh, over this past weekend. Uh, And so um, they were celebrating that, and apparently a bug has kind of gone through them. (laughs) And so uh, the choir has pivoted uh, for this day. Uh, And so as you heard with our prelude, we're playing some music uh, for different parts of the service. Um, So some of the uh, uh, selections that are printed in your bulletin are going to be a little bit different in terms of Uh, say, the offertory, the prelude was already different. We are, though, so grateful that we have Ruby, who will be playing the piano for our hymns, uh, as well as for the Gloria Patri and the doxology. Um, uh, And so we will uh, roll with this. Uh, God always keeping us on our toes, and so uh, we will be faithful, thankful for the choir, um, still for their leadership and for being with us today. I want to offer thanks, too, for um, all of you uh, who have asked how our vacation went. Um, It was very, very refreshing and uh, renewing, and uh, we are glad to be back. Um, uh, We had to fly back through Atlanta, and Delta did everything they could to try to keep us there. But, uh, But we... We, we made it through. We made it through after five hours of what should have been a 45-minute trip, and we're back. Um, so you're going to hear a lot of stories, <laughs> uh, maybe even a little bit more about that layover, but a lot of stories. You'll see a lot of pictures of our time away in Hawaii, and just thank you um, for giving me that time. I also want to let you know that tomorrow, with banks closed for the Juneteenth holiday, 
Um, Stephanie Taylor, our office administrator, will be working uh, remotely. Um, the church office phone will forward to her cell phone. So if you need her for anything, um, she'll be able to still answer your phone call. Um, I also will be in the office uh, myself um, uh, tomorrow, even though it is my normal day off. Um, I have another commitment on Tuesday uh, with the Presbytery, and so I figured I would uh, be in the office tomorrow especially as I'm playing a little bit of catch-up after being away. So the office will be open, um, but if you're planning to see Stephanie, you're going to have to deal with me instead. Um, please see all of our printed announcements as well, um, especially the insert about this is our story. And so if you have a favorite scripture or hymn, um, music that you want to suggest that we will use later in worship this summer, um, I do encourage you to uh, uh, fill that out, share those selections, or just simply Email me at your convenience in the days and weeks ahead, and we'll add those to the list. Please make note also of Spire articles, our newsletter articles being due this week, um, I believe on Tuesday the 20th is what that printed announcement says. Um, in that Spire, there will be more information about uh, the pastoral sabbatical, which will take place in 2024. Uh, the admin ministry team of our session will have more information that they've put together. And the letter that I always have at the front of the newsletter will also uh, be my own reflections on the sabbatical and the plans that are developing, the questions that we're still wrestling with a little bit um, and working together to find answers for. Um, and in the vein also of trying to be open, transparent, communicative as we can about this, I want to take a moment to answer one question um, that has come up, uh, at least while I was away. Um, uh, a question was made known to me um, about how often does a sabbatical happen? Um, a sabbatical is not an every year thing. <laughs> uh, in the Presbytery of New Hope, um, that sabbatical is encouraged uh, to take place after five years of service uh, in one uh, pastoral uh, location. Um, five years for me will be this Wednesday, uh, so I've become eligible for that sabbatical, um, but I'm also not going to take it right at the five-year mark. Uh, it'll be more at the five-and-a-half-year mark when that starts. Um, and then the clock begins again, um, and that, when that clock begins again is a bit of a decision um, that the session and I and then the congregation would make through terms of call um, as to when a uh, next pastoral sabbatical uh, could potentially um, be during my time of service here as your pastor. So I just wanted um, uh, to let folks know some folks had wondered if I was going to get a sabbatical now every year, um, and uh, I am, uh, don't think I could be away that long <laughs> every year. Um, so no, that will not be happening. It is something that is uh, traditionally every five to six, even seven years um, while that happens. Continue to bring questions, um, anything, hopefully there will be some that are answered in the newsletter for July if you have them. But if there are others um, that you have, please do ask me, ask one of our session members, um, and we will direct you uh, the best we know how and the best way we can. Um, at this time, I have uh, an announcement also from Kathy Blue about Garner Area Ministries and an urgent need in our food pantry. And so, um, Kathy, if you want to um, come forward and share that. morning. First of all, let me say how grateful Garner Area Ministries is for all the things that you have done for us. You have provided us time and time again in our time of need. Our problem is that the economy right now is very difficult on people who are marginally getting by. Rents have gone up a whole lot. And food has gone up a whole lot. And some people will never catch up. There is nothing they can do to ever catch up. And what we're finding is that our food pantry is, the, is really, really low on food. So if you could bring yourselves to go through and pull out an extra can of green beans or um, some soup or whatever you can do, we would greatly appreciate it right now. We are spending 
about $1,500 every two weeks on food. And unfortunately, that $1,500 can't go towards helping people pay rents and pay electric bills and all that. Um, and we're to the point where we're considering whether, whether we have to prioritize just paying bills and letting the food pantry go. So that's something that we're working on. But if you guys can, can you know, find some extra food hanging around, we would appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kathy. Um, so uh, last month, we were emphasizing peanut butter. So this month, we're emphasizing peanut butter plus everything else. Um, so whatever you can bring over the next several days, weeks, um, months, uh, we will collect and get to Garner Area Ministries. Um, one last announcement, um, also from Kamivi. Uh, he wanted to let folks know that on Wednesday, uh, June 21st, 10 a.m., he's going to be part of a panel discussion um, about uh, uh, fraud. Um, not committing it, but uh, how to uh, uh, understand if you're getting some sort of scam message via text, email, phone, whatever you may have. He's going to be part of a panel discussion. That's going to be 10 a.m. Uh, the location is, um, I think, going to be in Clayton. Is that correct? Um, so what we're going to do is uh, we'll get an email out to the congregation tomorrow that will have details on the time and the address and that sort of thing. If you don't receive email but might be interested in this or telling other folks about it, please see Kamivi before you leave today and get the details from him directly on that. Um, what a great community event uh, to help us with. And what a great time to be a community now together in worship and in thanks. And so I call upon Maria Contreras to lead us now in our call to worship. Please join me in a call to worship. God is our refuge and our strength, our present help in times of trouble. Even when the mountains fall into the sea, even when the earth shakes, we have to sing. We will not fear. God is with us. Please do not you are able to sing our opening hymn, number 370, This is My Father's World. Please, friends, you may be seated. The prophet Jeremiah reminds us that though we often seek and even proclaim peace, peace, our lives can often tell a story of a lack of peace and an abundance of conflict, of arrogance, of sin that creates division among God among our neighbors, and among ourselves. And so this time of confession is 
a chance to pause and rest our hearts and minds so that we can be honest, honest at where, about where our attempts at peace have been in vain and can be filled once more with the healing power of God's peace, God's mercy that allows us to try again. So will you please join me now in our prayer of confession, first by praying the one printed in the bulletin for us, and then by praying and confessing our sins silently. With one heart and voice, let us pray. God of peace, there are plenty of things that we allow to erode our faith in you. When life gets stormy, we let our uncertainty cloud our trust in you. We think we know better and start relying on ourselves to be able to weather the rain. Forgive our lack of hope and the disbelief that drowns us. Allow us to hold on to you, our rock, and to build our lives on the foundation of your love and peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, our rock and refuge. Amen. O Christ, have mercy upon us. Amen. As Jesus spoke over the storm, so too does Christ say now to us, to our minds, to our hearts, peace be still. Friends, know that in this word of Christ, in his life, death, and resurrection, our hearts are cleansed, our sins forgiven, our very lives redeemed. We are made new. Our peace is made real. Alleluia and amen. Because we know the peace of Christ, we are able to share that peace with one another, and so we have an opportunity to do that now as well. We will share the call and response, and then I invite you to greet one another with peace as you are led and able. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and also with you. Let us greet one another in peace. At this time, uh, Karen Lovering has our conversation for the young and young at heart. So any young disciples who'd like to come and get a front row seat, please do. Come on down. All right. Hey, you want to sit over here with us? Come on. Here, you sit on one side and I'll sit in the middle. 
Can you hear me? There we go. All right. So you guys ever worry about anything? You got any worries on your mind? Nothing? Well, you're young, so you know, you got nothing. <laughs> now, what's your problem? What are you worried about, sir? That's a good one. I agree. I am not a fan of the bugs either because you know what? They will bite me. My husband, no problem. Me, if there's a bug, I'm going to get bitten. Yeah, and something else I worry about, I worry about coming up here with you guys because I get real nervous. So I get worried. So do you know what, a, have you ever heard of a, a worry stone or a, a worry rock? Oh, I have, I have. You have? What is it? He does. Well, I got, now don't tell anybody, but I've got some here. They came from the memorial garden, but don't tell anybody. So what's a worry? You know what it is, Graham? What's a worry rock? What's a, a worry, a worry stone? Um, something you can rub your a finger on. That's right. When you're worried. When you're worried, when you're, worried, when you're afraid. So I've got, a, I've got some stones here. You want to try it? See if you're, you want to try it? Let's see, we might have a better one in here. Some of these weren't the best. I've got one on my desk at work. It's worn down a whole lot. <laughs> but what you do with it is you rub it when you get worried. Like if you're worried about, y'all are young, so maybe school, you worry about tests, worry about bees, you worry about the bugs, that sort of thing. When you get older, you might uh, rub it when you're, say, at work, or if you're worried about money, and all the things that adults worry about, right? Does that help you feel better? <laughs> Not really, right? I mean, it kind of does, right? It's something to do. It's a rock. It's a rock. It's a rock, exactly. So if we're worried about something, who's somebody else we might talk to? We'll start, what's today? We'll start with the earthly people. Who, who might we talk to? Your parents. Your parents. Yeah, what's today? Father's Day. Dads are the best to talk to. So if we get worried, we can talk to our dads or our moms, our parents. We have friends we can talk to. But who else do we have that we can talk to? Mr. Mike Koenig knows the answer to that. Who do we talk to, Mike? Jesus. There you go. Jesus. We can talk to Jesus. If we get worried, the scripture today that we're going to read, Jesus tells his disciples, he says, don't worry, don't be afraid. He's going away, but he's going to send somebody to us. We can have this rock, which it gives us something to do when we're worried, we're fidgety. But if we really need somebody to talk to, maybe we turn to our parents, or ultimately we can turn to Jesus because he's always there for us, right? All right, so next time you run into a bee, say a quick prayer and grab your rock and just start rubbing. Hopefully it'll go away, but we'll pray. For I found a yellow jacket nest yesterday. That's not good. Stay away from that. <laughs> all right, let's say a prayer, and then uh, we'll go back. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we are, first of all, thankful for these kids and all the young and young at heart uh, that we have today, but we are thankful that you always are here for us. Um, anytime we're worried or afraid, um, we can always turn to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, and I got, I've got rocks for anybody that wants them, so...
Please pray me for illumination. God, open our hearts and minds to what you're saying. Amen. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. A second reading from Apostle Paul's letter to the church in Rome. Romans 5, verses 1 through 8. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to the grace in which we stand and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that sufferings produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God, God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For a while we were still weak, and at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely would anyone die for any die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for his people in that while we were still sinners. Christ died for us. This is the word of the law. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our Father, it's time to hear your words. Use your messenger as you desire. Open the heart and mind and ear for the listener. In Jesus' name, amen. So in 2016, I went through the basic law enforcement training in Graham, North Carolina, which is what we normally call police academy. On the first day of the class, I thought we were going to be doing a lot of push-ups, a lot of sit-ups, jumping jacks, something that I was already used to being in the military. But to my surprise that day, things were a lot different. Early that Monday morning, all the trainees were called to see around the classroom table. And everybody had to answer one question. Why do you want to become a police officer? So to that answer, we had a lot of, to that question, we had a lot of answers. But one that was popular was this. I want to drive fast, take people to jail, and take names. <laughs> By the end of that session, it became clear that most of us, if not all of us, liked that answer. So after six months of training, I found myself patrolling the streets of Greensboro, showing that answer that I gave. So I stopped anything that was moving. Many had tickets, many went to jail. And I received a lot of kudos. But as the years went by, I started to think differently about my job. It actually resonated with me more when people would call me peace officers. So I started to question myself about what it means to be a peace officer. As I went through a lot of med meditation and self-reflection, I realized that it meant at one level that I was no different than anyone else. I realized that I once said that I wanted to drive fast. In fact, I mostly drove above the speed limit myself. I had just been lucky and not caught by someone else 
who also wanted to give a lot of tickets. <laughs> so then my approach started to change the moment I realized that I was no different than anyone else, that I was lucky and not caught. The Apostle Paul reminds us, reminds the church of this basic fact that we are all in the same boat. We all messed up, get things wrong. Things that we might judge another for, we may do ourselves. The good news is that according to Apostle Paul, that we are all together in God's embrace. In fact, Paul says right away in the first reading, the first verse of the reading today, that through Jesus, we have access to God's grace, a love that helps us stand and rise above thinking that we are better than others, or that our sufferings or sins define us. A grace that gives us hope. With such hope, we believe that no matter what we may be going through, we will not be disappointed. We remain hopeful, strong in faith, because he told us that nothing, and my friend, I mean nothing, can separate us from the love of God. So as my years passed in law enforcement, I began seeing things through different lanes, considering how, as a peace officer, I might broaden my purpose from going fast, writing a lot of tickets, arresting people, to sharing the hope which leads to peace. Some of my colleagues actually suggested that I became weak. To them, I asked one question. What are you really trying to accomplish when you arrest everybody or charge everybody? In fact, today as an investigator, I like to ask my victims one question. What do you want to see happen with your case? To this question, I get different answers. Some victims will say, I don't want to get anybody in trouble. Some will say, I just want my money back. And some will say, I just want him to leave me alone. So as I go through all these answers, I found that the common denominator is peace. I found that people don't care what other people are doing. They just want peace. So as a peace officer, what else could be a job for me other than promoting peace among people? My brothers and sisters, today we live in a world of uncertainty. A world in which, in which peace has become a rare thing. Hate is taking a place of peace, of love. Violence is becoming the norm. Most of us do not even want to turn the TV on at night to watch the news. We don't because we fear to see the violence that's taking place on our streets, in our communities, in our schools and churches. We are afraid to turn the TV on because we don't want to see the bloody battle that's taking place in Eastern Europe, in Africa, and everywhere else around the globe. My friends, we are afraid to turn the TV on to see the politics of hate that have taken place of peaceful and fruitful dis discussion and debate in Washington, D.C., and in our local government. So today I ask you, how might we all become more thoughtful 
as peace officers. What might it look like if we saw justice, not primarily as punishment or judging people by what they look like, how much money they have, or what political party, party they belong to, but as the process of recognizing wrongdoing and responding with mercy and love of Christ. A love that holds us accountable, but does not condemn us. My fellow Christians, as we work, hope, and pray for peace, I ask you to imagine what would the world look like if we shared this peace? What would our communities look like? What hope might we bring to the world when we understand our calling to be peace officers? One thing it might bring to us is a sense of joy. Even in the difficult times that we face, for what could be more joyful than our proclamation of belief in Jesus Christ, our God, uh, God our Father, the Almighty Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus who died for us, even though we are sinners. So I have a song. I have a song that gives me assurance. And it becomes, it has become a part of my morning commute. And he says this, God sent his son. They call him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my savior lives. Because he leaves, I can face tomorrow. Because he leaves, all fear is gone. Because he leaves. Because I know that he holds the future. And life is worth living just because he leaves. Because he leaves, I can face tomorrow. Because he leaves, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth living just because he leaves. So friends, as disciples of Christ, Let us find our true meaning of peace. Not to do what might make us feel happy, powerful, or superior, but that which shares God's grace and love for all people in Christ. Let us be peace officers in our families, our communities, our workplaces, and in the world. With that, we will find hope in Jesus. A hope that tomorrow will be always, always better than today. A hope that does not disappoint us. To God be the glory. Amen. Let us pray. Oh God, our Lord, you have spoken your words. Help us meditate on them. Help us find justice and peace, which allows us to have access to your grace 
and love. In Jesus' name. Amen. Kamevi, what are you doing next Sunday at 11? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Friends, I invite you to stand now in response as we sing hymn number 772, responding to the word we have heard as we live into hope. Remain standing as you are able, as we also share in the words of faith the church have long held on to, as we say what we believe using the Apostles' Creed. With one heart and voice, let us say what the church believes. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, I invite Martha Long forward for our monthly presentation of prayer shawls. Thank you. We have two shawls to give and three crosses. So before we give them, may we bow in prayer, please. Most gracious and merciful God, may your grace be upon these shawls, warming, comforting, enfolding, and embracing. May this mantle be a safe haven, a sacred place of security and well-being, sustaining and embracing in good times as well as difficult ones. May the ones who receive these shawls be cradled in hope, kept in joy, graced with peace, and wrapped in love. And Father, may these crosses be signs of your abiding strength and comfort for the ones who receive them, serving as a reminder of your love and our church's prayers, which surround us in every moment of distress and joy. For we make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, who bore the cross and rose again to give us new life. Amen. I want to thank, before we give the shawls, I want to thank Kathy Blue, because she made both of these shawls. And I want to thank Richard Whipple, because he made the crosses that we're giving. And Without y'all, we would 
not be able to do this. So thank you very much. The first shawl today goes to Andrew Andre Cully, who is now, this is a prayer shawl of blessing and answers to prayers because Andre has received his housing voucher, he has moved in his house, and he is no longer homeless. So we give him a shawl of prayer and comfort that he will continue to have blessings as he continues his life in his new home. Another shawl goes to Richard Hamilton, who was a friend of Sandy Lee. Richard has a mass at the base of his brain that is metastatic from melanoma. And the last update I heard is that it has spread throughout his body, so we pray for hope for Richard that he can, can heal from this melanoma. We have three crosses to give. The first one goes to Jeff Wagstaff, who is the cousin of, Philip, of um, Sybil Petswater. And the last uh, we heard about his cancer is that it was not responding to treatment. And so they have started a new treatment, and he will get that and start that soon. So we pray that that will give different results for him. Another cross goes to Rick Carpenter for the loss of his mother. Rick, it's good to see you here today, and we certainly give you prayers for the loss of your mother and share in your sorrow for that. Another cross goes to Rose Gherkin for the loss of her husband, Michael. And it's hard to deal with these issues, but we thank you very much for your support of the prayer shawls and the prayer cross ministry because it does provide hope and help to so many. Thank you. The shawls and crosses are another way to keep peace, to be peace officers for this world that often is in need of such gifts and blessings. Let us now join once again to remember our blessings and to offer our continued concerns to the God who hears us and loves us. Let us pray. God of all grace and peace, we come with honesty and courage to lift up all that is within us, trusting that we might be heard in your good work proclaimed. Especially this day, we pray with thanksgiving for all the blessings of peace we do know, for refuge of home, family, friends, for good work that has meaning and purpose, for time away to rest and recharge so that we may be filled with greater joy and deeper gratitude. We give you thanks for church community that encourages us to be our true selves. We thank you for the freedom your love grants us, the freedom and the power to love neighbor as self. So in that love, we also pray for our neighbors and ourselves, that your peace might overcome divisions and differences that we too often let separate us that your mercy might make us more open and eager listeners for voices that ask us for help or offer guidance, that your grace may help us remove the log out of our own eye before attempting to remove the speck from another, that your joy might chase away any thoughts of despair that threaten to undo us and ground us again in the trust that you are still present, still working, still loving, even among the conflicts and concerns of our life. Indeed, on this day in particular, remind us that the whole world is in your embrace, in your hands, that you are a faithful, eternal Father, strong to save, and that we and the whole human family are your beloved children. May this truth of our faith fill us with a hope that does not disappoint and increase our gratitude for fathers who have meant everything to us. Be with us also as we grieve fathers no longer present in the way we would like, or as we struggle with complicated, even broken relationships we might share with fathers or any other members of your family. In all times and circumstances, O Lord, may we and the church everywhere be ambassadors of your peace, inspired once more by the Spirit to be eager and excited to build relationship, to share burdens, to show love. 
For we pray in the name of your abiding love, that love made flesh in Jesus Christ our Lord, who has taught us to live and teaches us also to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let's continue our time of worship by offering to God the gifts that we have, our tithes and all morning offerings. Let us pray. God bless all these gifts we give, all the hands that give them, and all the hearts that we receive them. Amen. Friends, let us remain standing as we sing our Sydney hymn number 275, A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
I had to check something. Uh, friends, um, please give your gratitude to Kamivi and the way that the Spirit worked through him as you leave today. Um, I am so grateful for him and for his entire family to be part of our church family. On this day, let us live that hope that does not disappoint us. Let us share that peace that surpasses all understanding and not our fear. As we go from this place, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted upon you and indeed bring you and keep you in peace. Alleluia and amen. And let us sing, now go now in peace.